try to solve one example now uh, in which we'll follow all these steps that we started before the break. So let's see. Let's see here. Mr. B has following investment opportunity. This is time period like year one, two, three, four. And here they, they are end of cash, like end of year cash flows after tax. Now find the internal rate of return of the project. This is part one of the question. And part two says that if required rate of return is 15%, will you accept the project, right? So in this case, the first step is to find the NPV of cash flows at any rate of your choice. Like I told you that in the exam, obviously I would mention specifically that you start your calculations at a particular rate and number, and, and, but for, for now you can take any rate between eight to 12%, okay? So this is how we will calculate NPV. You already know the procedure. How do we calculate NPV? Uh, the first column is the time column, time period column. The next one is cash flows and then present value of, of, of cash flows. Obviously that is there. Okay, sorry. So present value of uh, interest factor and then present value of cash flows. So from where we will get this information? Can someone tell me? So through table. Table, from right? the table, from the table, from the table. Yeah. So for for year zero, obviously present value interest factor is one, correct? That means uh, the amount remains the same for year zero, whether it is written in the table or not. Generally, table starts from year one. So this is year zero, the time of investment, obviously. So I'm just ignoring it. So this is the first year calculation, or sorry, the present value interest factor, and this way by multiplying the present value interest factor by the cash flow, we will get the present value of that particular year. I hope this is clear to everyone. You already know that how to calculate NPV, correct? I hope this is clear. Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. then present value of cash inflows would be equal to all these present values minus, sorry, sorry, this is present value of cash inflows. That means by adding all these values, this is what we get. Present value of all cash inflows and how to calculate NPV. NPV would be equal to present value of all cash inflows minus the ICOF. That is 15,000. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And here we got an NPV that is negative minus 2240.5 so what do you think what should i do next decrease the, the yeah the the the, uh, the step two the step two that we started it says that if npv found in first step is positive find an other npv at higher rate or vice versa vice versa means now we got an npv that is negative so here we will not increase or will not go uh, calculate an NPV at higher, rather we'll calculate NPV at a smaller rate, correct? Because yes. our NPV was negative. So uh, as I told you, the maximum jump that you can take is of 6%. So anything between one to 6% would be fine. But for exam, obviously I'm, I've recommended you to take a jump of, direct jump of 6%. But here I'm, I'm taking a jump of 4% only, right? So present value of, uh, sorry, present value interest factor at 6% now, I'm going to calculate second NPV at 6%. So this is the value that I'll get from the table. And when I'll multiply my cash flows with this interest factor, like these are the cash flows for 40,000, 60,000, but this time I'm multiplying it by the present value interest factor at 6%. So we calculated an NPV at 10% first, and now because that NPV was negative, so now I'm calculating a new NPV at 6%, right? So here, present value of all cash inflows came to be 164706, and NPV came to be a positive NPV. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. now st step three says that keep on repeating step two until you find a positive and one negative NPV. In in our case, we have already obtained one negative and 
one positive e and uh, npv correct so now the, we'll move on to the fourth step and that is using interpolation formula after completing step three that means when you get a positive and a negative npv then we use the interpolation formula i have just brought forwarded all those four values that we calculated on the previous slide the present value of all cash inflows at 10 percent the npv at 10 percent then present value of all cash inflows at 6% and NPV at 6%. Is this clear? What are these values about? Yes, sir. Okay, so now interpolation formula, like we have got two, actually the same formula. One is the expanded form, another one is the short form of it. So now let's try to put in the values. So I would request you guys to please participate on that. So first thing is the lower rate. In our case, what is the lower rate? 6%. 6%. Right. 6%. So this would be 6 pattern, right? And now what about plus NPV of low rate? 14,700. 14, very right, sir. Very right. Okay. And what about higher present value of cash inflows minus lower present value of cash inflows? Now we have got two present value of cash inflows. One is 147,000 and other is 164,000. So which one is higher? Obviously 164. 164. So that means 164,706 minus the lower present value of cash inflows. It is not about NPV, it is not about rates. It is about present value of cash inflows. Please be clear about it. In the exam, please pay special attention to this because because of hurry or rush, sometimes people don't write the present value of cash inflows, rather they start writing or they just write the NPV instead. Please don't do that. It's about the present value of cash inflows. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, so that means 164706 minus 147759.5. And what about higher rate minus low rate here? 10 minus 6. 10, 10, 10 percent, percent minus, minus 6. Minus 6 percent. Yeah, so th this would be 10 percent minus 6 percent. That, that would give us what? 4 percent? Yeah. Right? And that, that 4 percent would be equal to, like in your calculations, you'll, you'll use 0 0.04 here. Yes. And what about 6%? You will use 0 0.06 here, correct? So this is how you will plug in the values here. And at the end of the day, you will get an IRR, but you will have to multiply that IRR by 100 again. Uh, let me show you that. So this is the IRR before, before this thing. You will get an IRR of 0 0.0947. So when I multiply it by 100, it will become 9.47%, right? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Right? Yes. So you, so you will get an... Uh, sorry? Yeah, the, yeah this is the rate. Of... That's, yeah, yeah, this is a rate at which NPV would be zero. This is the rate, right? So that's why we call it as IRR. So if you see... At 10%, NPV was negative. At 6%, NPV was positive. But at 9.47%, NPV was exactly zero. Is it clear? Yes. yes. Right. Okay. So now the first step of the question asked you to find the IRR that we have already found. And it, it was 9.47. The second part of the question says, if your required rate of return is 15%, will you accept this project or not? So what no, I will do, I'll just, no. Why? No, because because my IRR is less, less than, than the required rate of return. So therefore, I will not accept this project. This is what IRR is. That's it. Clear? Yeah. Okay. You see, it's not very difficult, but it is lengthy. Yes, I agree, it is lengthy. And for that, please follow my advices. Trust me, you'll be able to complete the uh, paper maybe 20 minutes before the end time, right? But if you'll not follow the guidelines, obviously you'll get stuck somewhere. One of the guidelines that uh, I would like to add, or I might have already told you in the last class is that please attempt this question at the end. Don't try to attempt this question in the beginning. This is my advice. Obviously, I cannot force you. 
Why I'm saying this? Because many a times when you attempt this longer question, which requires a lot of calculations in it, so you may get stuck somewhere. For example, you may get an IRR equals to maybe let's say 35%. And you know, you would say, oh, oh this is too big a value. I, I, this value doesn't, you know, feel uh, or look appropriate to me. So you would get stuck in that calculation somewhere. So it's better, it's better to leave this question for the end. However, obviously I cannot force you for that. There are people uh, like there generally there are two type of you know the two ways of attempting attempting a paper there are some people who prefer the tougher and the longer questions you know right in the beginning and there are people who leave such questions till end so if you 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 can leave this question till end well and good but if you can't like this is your general approach towards exam that you want to attempt the tougher questions first in that case just try it right if everything goes smooth, just keep doing it. But the moment you get stuck somewhere, please leave that question here. Don't keep fighting with this question for a long time because it will waste a lot of your time and you may miss some very easy questions that are there uh, in the paper, uh, you know, just because you got stuck here and you started fighting with the question. Just leave a couple of pages and move to the next question first attempt all other questions and then at the end come back and then you can continue your fight till end of the time like end of the paper okay got it sir got it sir okay right so now let's have a look on a bit more lengthier and 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 complicated example right this is a question that is given for you okay let let me uh, give you or tell you one thing you will be given or you are given actually many questions, practice questions in the slides, okay? And for from exam perspective, if you attempt only these questions, that is enough for you. One of the questions that is there in the, in the lecture handouts, it contains, uh, you know, values of cash flow such that if you'll calculate NPV at 10%, you may not get a positive or negative value obviously a positive one then a 50, at 15 percent let's say you take a jump it's still positive then 20 percent it's still positive if 25 percent still positive 30 percent 40 percent even i guess up to 40 percent it would remain positive you know that question is there just to give you a practice just to give you a feel that if you you are required to do multiple calculations uh, if you would take smaller jumps, this is what would happen with you, right? So if you don't get, you know, a good answer for that, a negative NPV, even at 40%, just leave that question. This single question would give you enough practice for calculating NPV at various rates. Is it clear? Yes, sir, but uh, I do have a question here. Sure, sir. So in such scenario where we tried uh, say 10% and then 15% and the difference between mm -hmm. these two, say mm -hmm. uh, at the first stage we get 4,000 and the, in the next stage we get say 3,500 uh, the mm -hmm. result in positive. So can we try the bigger uh, in that case or not? Or we have to follow yes, this yes. minus 6 No, 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 no. you can't. So look, there, that 6% rule is applicable to the interpretation formula. Right, you can try bigger okay. values, right? That, that's okay. why this question is there for you. It will help you, allow you to see the impact of increase in percentages. Like what happens if you increase a percentage by 2%? What happens if a you increase a percentage by 10%, let's say, right? So in such cases, obviously, but for exam, obviously I'm not going to give you such things. Actually, what happens, look at this cash flows. Let's see, I'm getting 10,000 here. I'm getting 8,000 here. I'm getting 5,000 here. Right, and I'm getting, let's say, 4,000 here. This is one thing. Let's have a look on another scenario. I have the same cash flows, but the timing is different. Like here, 
4000 i'm getting in the first year right 5000 in the second 8000 in the third and the 10000 towards end right now if you calculate the present values for both of these cash flows apparently the values of amounts of these cash flows are equal and let's say we calculate npv at 10 percent for any 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 value of icuf obviously the same icuf here is here do you think that npv would be different for both of these i think yes yes why uh, so actually, the, the more we are getting at the later stage, and less we are getting the current stage. Actually, where it's a value of ten. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Okay, sir. Uh, who was the first one who said uh, it would be different? Sir, no man. Zero double eight. Sir, no man. Uh, sir, okay. Can Can you explain it? What What uh, Sir is saying? Can you explain that why it would be different? Uh, no? Okay, sir. Uh, sir, what was your name? The other one who explained it. I'm sorry. Mubin, sir. Mubin. Mubin. Huh? Mubin. Okay, okay, sir. So please, CR, please note down one mark for Sir Mubin, right? Luck. Note it, sir. Note it. Thank you. Okay. okay. Welcome, sir. Okay. <laughs> Here. You know, the 10,000, a larger amount we are getting just in the first year. So the reduction in this amount would not be that much. So like it would be only 9,700 or something. So the bigger amount, the major recovery is done in early years and its worth is not yet reduced. But in this case, we are getting 10,000 after four years. So this amount would be reduced a lot, and this might be equal to only maybe 8,000. So reduction in the worth of 10,000 that is being received far in future as compared to the reduction of this amount, the same amount of 10,000 in one year is, is, you know, very different. Because of that, we get different NPVs at different rates. Oh, sorry, at the same rate. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And, and this would, the second one would have a lower NPV actually. Correct. And the first one would have a higher NPV because here the major recoveries are done without any, you know, without much reduction in their worth. But here major recoveries are being received after three or four years with a lot of reduction in the worth so therefore the npv of the first example would be higher so that means the increase or decrease in npv or our npv doesn't only depend on the interest rate but it also depends on the nature of the cash flows is it clear yes sir yes sir Right. So when you will see, like when you in during your practice sessions, once you will increase the rates, you may find very, you know, strange behaviors there sometimes. Like you are increasing the rate only by two percent, and you might see a jump of NPV or or the NPV might you know uh, increase or decrease uh, to to a larger amount, and for another cash flow. Uh, you may have an increase or decrease of discount rate of 6%, 7%, but still, you know, the decrease or increase in net present value might not be that much. Is that clear? Yes. Sir. Right. So this behavior you can observe during your practice sessions, but for exam, obviously, uh, let's let's not waste time in, in taking smaller jumps. Okay. So now, Okay, oh, please keep, 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 oh, yes, sir. Uh, hello, please keep you some mute. Okay. So now, here, we have an example. 
this example is there for you and uh, uh, we will try to calculate uh, payback period using the same example. We will try to calculate NPV using the same example. We'll try to calculate PI using the same example. And then we'll try to calculate the IRR using the same example. However, because of the shortage of time, I hope you already know that how to calculate payback period. We don't need, you know, much practice on it now. Similarly, NPV calculation is part of the IRR calculation. So you already know that, isn't it? Yes, sir. Right. So my focus right now would be IRR only. So there are two projects, mutually exclusive projects. One is X and other one is <laughs> Mr. X and Mr. Y here. Project X and Project Y here. And <laughs> Jima. Yeah. Sir, as for we have solved the previous example, in 9.47 uh, internal rate of return rate, our NP is what exactly becoming equal to zero. There is still some in the difference. Okay, yes, that is rounding off difference, right? There, there could be a rounding off difference. You're right. Okay. Right, there, there would be a minor, like maybe 100, 200 would be there. So okay. it's a 576. Okay, yeah, because of the larger amounts, yes, that, that could be a reason, right? So that's okay. why we say, that's that's why we say, you know, the, it's it's just an interpolation, it's just a guess, okay? So this will, but this would give you a fair idea. Is that clear? Okay, instead of... Uh, so I have a question. Okay, okay, let, let ma'am finish. G ma'am, come again, please. Uh -huh, that's fine. If 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 you already know, if you already know another method, yes, then 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 so you can use that in the exam. Okay. G sir, about the uh, sir, we are using the positive cash inflows in, in the later stages of the project in the first year, second year, third year. But if we have a negative cash flow, then how would we calculate? Exactly. Look, look, we will go by the net cash flows always, right? NPV, that is about NPV calculation. That is not about IRR calculation. Like, let's say, do you remember the net cash flow concept? Like, let's say there's, there's a negative cash flow here and the two are positive. So what I would do, I will calculate its present value and add with the initial cash outflow. Correct? Okay. Right, this is one of the options or other option could be, I will calculate the present value of this cash flow plus this cash flow minus this one. In any case, it would be having the same effect, correct? Okay. Okay, now in case of two mutually exclusive projects, like let's say X and Y, these are the you know cash flows that are there in front of you. We need to see which of the uh, sorry which of the project would be better obviously this is mutually exclusive that means we have to select one project and the question asks you to calculate the payback period the npv the pi and the irr now our focus would only be the irr that we are studying now but for the calculation of irr what is our first project can someone tell me calculate the npv at some rate yeah. Right. So what I'm doing here is the calculation that is done in the part B. Calculation of NPV at 10%. I will use the same calculation as a first step of my IRR calculation. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Right. The first step of IRR calculation is to calculate NPV at any rate. And in front of us, the part B says that calculate NPV at 10%. So let's make this thing as a first step of my calculations. So here, here I'm going to calculate NPV at 10%. This is the payback period. I'm just skipping it now. I'm calculating NPV at 10%. But please, before I move forward, please remember. Please pay close attention to this, whatever I'm saying. I have given you two proposals, right? And I'm asking you to calculate or compare these two proposals based on the IRR. Correct? Is it clear? 
Yes. Okay. One way could be that you calculate the IRR of proposal one. Like you do all the calculations, the interpolation formula and everything for first. Then you start calculation for the second project. Right here. Again, starting from NPV at 10% or 8% and then, you know, using everything here, you will get one IRR and the, in the second step, you will get IRR of other and then you, you can compare these things. This is one way. Second thing is. Look. Because like this, this is this is what I'm following right now. I am trying to show you both the calculations in parallel. Right on the same screen. On the same screen, I'm going to do these calculations in parallel, like half of the screen would be showing calculations for one proposal. Half of the screen would be showing calculation for the other proposal. But in exam, uh, if you are not very much comfortable with this approach, please don't use this this scheme of, of uh, you know, uh, attempting the paper. Don't try to solve both the proposals at the same time as I'm doing. I'm doing it so that you get a better picture in parallel uh, for both the projects. For you, a better way could be just calculate IRR of one project in detail till end. Once you have calculated the IRR of first proposal, then you start the calculation for the second proposal. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, why I'm saying that? Because on my slides, I try to solve both the things in parallel. Students also try to do the same in the exam, but this is difficult to handle in the exam, especially. So please don't take this risk. It's better for you to handle one proposal at a time. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, now let's let's have a look on this. Here, I'm starting my calculations with 10 percent, right? Sorry, no. Here I'm starting my calculation with 10 percent now. So present value interest factor at 10 percent is 0 0.9091, 0 0.8264 and 0 0.7513, right? And now the cash flows for the first project is here and cash flows for the second project are, are here. So I'll just multiply these two values and I will get the present value of cash flows for X. And by here in the second one, I'll multiply these cash flows again by the same interest factor that I've taken from the table and I'll, I'll get the present values here. So now present value of all cash inflows minus the present value of all ICUF or all cash outflows would be 4958.44, correct? This would be my NPV. Is it yes. clear? Yes, sir. Okay. In case of Y, you see, I'm solving both the questions in parallel, but you don't have to do that. In case of Y, NPV of Y is 16504. So both of these NPVs are positive, right? So what next to do? Increase the rate. Increase the rate for Increase both of them, the right? Yeah. Let's say in the exam, one of these comes to be positive, the other one comes to be negative. So you won't be able to, you know, for one, you have to increase the rate and for other, you have to decrease the rate. Yes. So if you'll try to solve these problems this way in parallel, that would be or that might become very difficult for you. Is it clear? That's why I'm saying please calculate IRR of one proposal first and then move on to the second one. Clear? Yes. Sir. Okay, so now uh, for IRR calculations, I will require six values. What can someone tell me? What are those six values? So we need to calculate uh, the higher PVs of all safes, the lower PVs of all safes. And and the rates, the higher and rate, the lower rate, and the, the rate, interview, right? Rate. Yeah. So so th that means, for my next calculation, I will require present value of cash inflows for proposal X and NPV of proposal X at ten percent. Correct. Yeah. 
and for second project two i will require present value of cash inflows at 10 percent and the npv at 10 percent any doubts about that right okay because right. i have required these values in the interpolation formula so i'm just you know bringing in or bringing forward the same values can you see this the previous calculation of npv at 10 percent this is sum of present value of all cash inflows and this is npv for x this is at 10 percent similarly sum of present value of cash inflows 166 and the npv of y this is the same that we just calculated is it clear okay according to the irr calculations the next step is to increase the percentage so this time i'm increasing it to 15 percent right since both of the npvs are positive i'm increasing the percentage to 15 percent so now you look at this again the same present value in trust factor at 15 percent and present value of x are shown here by multiplying these two i'm getting the present value of cash inflows for proposal x and then multiplying these values again by the same interest vector i will get the present value of cash inflows of y any doubts about that no no okay so now npv of x is minus 3000 now correct so for proposal x we have got one npv that is positive at 10 percent and one npv that is negative at 15 percent so what should be our next step for proposal x so we we should calculate the inter uh, IRR in, using the yeah i using interpolation formula but let's have a look on the y proposal y here The NPV at another. yeah yeah Absolutely. so NPV at Y is sixteen thousand positive and NPV of Y at fifteen percent is still positive. That means we still need to take one more jump, correct? At least. Yeah. At so I'm leaving yeah I'm leaving the calculations for X here, but I'm I'm further calculating the the NPV for Y. We are done with the X. Correct? One positive, yes, one negative. But in case of Y, you see NPV of Y is this. I've ignored the previous calculation of NPV. Why? Do you remember that we wanted to have a closer yes. gap, right? We didn't want that yeah. uh, to have a gap of 10 and 20%. So I've ignored the first calculation. I'm keeping the calculation of 15% with me. So now, I will do another calculation and this time I'm doing this calculation at 20%. Right? And putting in the values, this is what we will get. Here, the present value of all cash inflows is 141 and something, and the NPV of Y is negative 831094. So now we have got a positive NPV at 15% and a negative NPV at 20%. Is it clear? Yes. So now you yes, see, sir. that's why I was emphasizing that please don't try to attempt both the proposal in parallel. You know, things might turn very difficult for you to handle during the exam if you did things calculation in parallel. First, calculate the IRR for X and then calculate the IRR for y right if such a question come question comes clear yes, sir. okay so now we have to put in the in, use the interpolation formula these are the values that are there in front of you for for proposal x at 10 percent we have got a positive npv and at 15 percent we have got a negative npv is it clear yes sir but for proposal Y, at 15%, we have a positive NPV. And for 20%, we have a negative NPV. So now we will try to use the interpolation formula for both. 
so in case of proposal x what would be my lower rate here 10 percent 10 percent yeah 0.10 and npv of lower rate is 49 okay then higher present value of cash inflows minus lower present value of cash inflows we have got 104 minus 96, minus 96, 96. correct yeah then higher rate minus lower rate that means 15 percent minus 10 percent right so this is what we will got so it would it would be the irr for proposal x is 12.93 percent correct yes now calculating this uh using interpolation formula for proposal y what would be the lower percent here 15%. 15 percent 15 percent that is 0.15 and what would be the npv of low rate it would be three two three one okay what would be higher present value of cash inflows we have two cash in one five three and one yeah, very right so then then again so now by putting values 15 percent would come here and and here the difference in the or change in the rates is 20 minus 15. You see, we have ignored that 10% calculation that we initially did. Yeah. Otherwise, the gap between two percentages would have like 10%. huge. 10%. It would have been 10%. So you already have seen that even at 6%, we don't get the exact zero NPV because of the rounding out differences and all that. So here, that's why we want to be precise as much as possible. So in this case, my IRR, would be 16.4 percent is it clear yeah now one project has got or proposal has got an irr of 12.93 so i'm just assuming it to be 13 percent just uh for a uh, purpose of discussion right and this let's take it equals to 16 percent correct for a discussion that i'm going to start now now if my question is if i ask you which one to prefer so which project would you prefer 16 percent 16 percent right right if i ask you yeah if i ask you which one to select in that case first you need to check the required rate of return like if but in general if i ask you which one is better among these two or which one should we prefer so obviously we would prefer the one with the higher irr however for selection or rejection decision we need to know the rrr is it clear yes sir. so now if these are mutually exclusive projects and that means we have to select one and my required rate of return is 17 percent then what 16 percent no both rejected sir oh, sorry, both, both, rejected. Rejected. Both, both of them will do both right? are rejected. yeah so if my rrr is 14 percent then obviously 16 percent 16 if my, and if my required rate of return is 12 percent then both are mutual exclusive no these are mutually yeah mutual exclusive only 16 percent we are certain. very right sir very right so we'll choose one but if these are independent then we can choose both of these is it both clear yes sir Achha, up, yes sir. now there's some more discussion that is not part of your syllabus, but you need, I guess, you should know a little bit, bit about that, right? So if you, you can't, couldn't understand that, that's fine. But the bottom line, you should actually remember. And what is that? IRR versus NPV. Look, most of the time, the findings or the result that we get from NPV we get the same result from IRR. What does it mean? Do you remember an example in which, according to the NPV, we were, you know, uh, let's say proposal X was being recommended, and according to PI, proposal Y was a better choice or something like that. There was an example that we did, right? Yes, sir. NPV was yes, saying that sir. X is better, but the PI was saying that Y is better, right? So that means recommendations of NPV was different from the recommendations of PI. Similarly, in case of NPV and IRR, sorry, NPV and 
IRR, mostly, almost all of the time, we get the same recommendations. If NPV is recommending Y, IRR would also recommend that Y is better. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If, if NPV is recommending X, IRR would also recommend the same result or same project. However, sometimes, however, sometimes NPV may recommend Y and IRR may recommend you X. Sometimes there is a difference. There is a conflict between the recommendations of NPV and IRR. Is it clear? Yes, sir. We call this conflict as NPV IRR conflict. When NPV is recommending us another project and based on IRR, you know, we, we are getting a recommendation for another project. In this, this scenario is called as NPV IRR conflict. In this case, which project to prefer? Shall I go by the recommendation of IRR? Or shall I go by the recommendation of NPV? IRR. I think no, NPV. No. IRR, NPV. Sir. NPV. Right? NPV. NPV. Yeah. NPV. Just remember this rule. Whenever there's a conflict between NPV and IRR, we actually go by the rate uh, by the recommendation of NPV. NPV, NPV. has an upper hand in this case. Right. Yes. There are multiple reasons, but uh, that that are beyond the scope of this. Now, let me explain you a few more points. When this scenario would occur, I'm saying that most of the time NPV and IRR would recommend the same project. However, very few times there would be a scenario in which the recommendation of NPV and IRR might be different. What would be that scenario? Actually. That scenario would be when there is a huge difference in initial cash outflows this is one scenario when there is a huge difference between the initial cash outflows okay let me here difference in project scale this is one scenario because of which you may have you know a different recommendation of irr versus a different recommendation from npv second thing difference in cash flow timings do you remember I just gave you an example in which I told you that 10,000 we were receiving at the end and in the fourth year and in other cash flows we were receiving the 10,000 in the earlier years. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So if that is the scenario, again, in, in such scenarios, we will see an IRR versus an NPV conflict, right? In these two cases, we might see the difference, but whenever the difference like this occurs, there's a conflict between NPV IRR. You just go by the recommendations of NPV. Is it clear? Yes, sir. OK, so now uh, actually these are more details. Uh, you know. I guess I guess you don't need to know that, but but still let, let me just try to explain this a little bit, not much. Here, if you see, we have different discount rates on X axis, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, and so on. And if you see the black colored lines, it tells you the NPV of Y. And here, the red color line, it is telling you the NPV of Z, the second proposal. If you see at a certain rate, at a certain rate, that means a rate below 13.09, the discount rate below this, the NPV of Y is higher as compared to NPV of Z. You see, NPV of Y is yes. this and NPV of Z is lesser. But after this point, if you see, the NPV of Z is higher as compared to NPV of Y, correct? Correct, sir. So right? can I give so, a simple example for everyone's understanding? Ji, 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 sir, please. Okay, do you have a foreign student or should I explain in Urdu? 
<laughs> I think Abdul Rahman is there. Okay, uh, let me explain in English. <clears throat> so, just a simple example for everyone's understanding uh, that if uh, why we are prefing NPV uh, instead of IRR in the case of conflict, as for my understanding, mm -hmm. uh, mute your mic one three three. <clears throat> one three three, please. Yes, thank you very much. So, as per my understanding, uh, we are looking into the net present value of our investment instead of mm -hmm. IRR because uh, maybe we are calculating, say, uh, as per the current industry practice, we are assuming that 15% is our uh, RRR, means mm -hmm. we, we want the investment return on the rate of 15% and say the IRR is 16%. So, we could uh, accept the project, but if we calculate the NPV, uh, but the amount we uh, 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 receive in return is lesser than the amount we are investing today. So that's mm -hmm. why we prefer uh, NPV on NPV. IRR. Very right. Very right. NPV gives you a clear cut indication that gives you amount actually, right? The amount that you are getting in return. So you're very right, sir. Okay. So now here, if you see, this is the break even or indifference point. And what is that indifference point at this rate? The, we will get NPV of both the projects equal, right? So if you if you look at this, um, okay, no, no okay, that, that is enough for you. That is enough for you. You only need to remember one point, and that is if actually two points. Generally speaking, NPV and IRR gives you the same result, right? But if the NPV and IRR are giving you different results, in that case, you will prefer or you will choose the result of NPV. Is it clear? This is one thing that you need to keep in mind. Second thing, if, if, or oh sorry, when this happens, that we are getting or we will get a different recommendation of NPV and IRR, the NPV IRR conflict. Just remember these two points. When there's a difference in project scale and when there's a difference in cash flow timings. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So that's all about IRR. Now you can, you know, practice your your uh, uh, these practice questions. You can just attempt at your own and in the next class, we will actually study. Uh, we'll try to conclude all this discussion, right? We will see how we do we use uh, all these things in uh, in a feasibility report, and what other factors are there apart from the financial factors? What other considerations are there while checking the feasibility of a project? And then our first part of the course, that is project finance management, would be over. And from there on, we will start studying the second part that is project cost management. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So, yes. 